Now, I know, because, uh, again, I've seen your, uh, your reporting on Jabril Peppers throughout the year, being a Michigan guy watching your broadcast. You, you did a handful of those games. You keep mentioning Deion Buchanan as a, as, a, as a comp for him. So you're talking about, what, middle first round, late first round maybe for, for Peppers in the, yeah, in the draft? Yeah, I think, I think somewhere in the middle of the, of the first round. I think, um, you know, the, it's funny because I talk to guys in the league and some guys absolutely love them. And then I talked to some some other guys, and they they think I've, I've completely overrated him, and that he you know they, they always point to the fact that he he doesn't turn the ball over, not you know I think only one career interception, not a ton of passes broken up, and at his size, can he wind up playing the same type of role, which was kind of a, a, a will linebacker, an outside linebacker slash nickel guy, who was at his best when he turned him loose up the field as a, a pass rusher and and a disruptive run defender and did a great job of keeping off of blocks. But the guys that don't like him as much wonder, is he going to be able to play that same type of role in the league because he's so undersized? And Buchanan, when he was coming out, was a safety, an in-the-box safety, who was about 207, 208 pounds and, and has gone on to, to play well at, at Arizona and, and um, it really adjusted, like I said, to that, that outside linebacker role for them. But in today's league, the reason I like him so much, you need versatile players that can be on the field all three downs, that can cover as well as can rush the, the smartest most, and has the highest football IQ of any player he's coached outside of Andrew Luck, which is, is pretty impressive. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.